Good day, little friends and storytime parents. Welcome to another storytime session with your friendly library tech, Miss Tiffany, at your MWR Community Library. Today, I picked some of my favorite books to read to you, so let's begin. Before we dig in, I wanted to remind you that we have begun our annual summer reading program. Our theme for this year is Dig Deeper. And so if you want to sign up or you want to sign your family up, you can do so at Guantanamo Bay, MWR, dot beanstack dot org forward slash reader 365 so here's the link right here or the app is also included in your android store the google play store the ios and on windows so all you have to do to search is look up guantanamo bay or navy and then it should pop right up so again you can go to guantanamo bay mwr dot beanstack dot org forward slash reader 365 and you read every day this summer to earn incentives at your installation library all right so let's begin so my first book of the day is called amazing gorillas Gorillas live in families, like many people do. A gorilla family is called a group. In most groups, there are two or three mothers and their children. A group may have one or two young males. A young male gorilla is called a blackback. Many groups also have one older male. When a male gorilla is about 12 years old, the fur on his back turns gray or silver. Then he is called a silverback. The silverback is often the father or grandfather of the babies in his group. Gorillas are like people in another important way. Both gorillas and people are animals called primates. Chimps and monkeys are primates too. Every primate has a thumb and four fingers on each hand. The thumb makes it easier for a primate to pick a leaf off a twig or swing from a branch or tickle a baby, just like we do. All primates take care of their babies for a long time until the babies are ready to live on their own. Most often, a gorilla mother has one baby at a time. The baby hangs onto the fur on its mother's stomach. When it is a little older, it will ride on her back. Young gorillas spend hours playing. They chase each other. They climb trees and swing on branches. One gorilla may stand on top of a fallen tree. The others try to push it off. Young gorillas learn by playing with other gorillas. A young gorilla learns to make grunts that means stop, don't do that. It learns to make soft sounds like a person burping. These sounds mean I'm happy. Everything is good. It learns to hit its chest and slap leaves or tree trunks and scream. This means I'm very strong. Watch out. A young gorilla drinks its mother's milk. Grown-up gorillas eat leaves and fruit and sometimes insects or flowers. They hardly ever eat meat. Gorillas are big animals. A silverback can be as heavy as two grown men. Gorillas must eat a lot of plants to feed their large bodies. They eat for most of the day. When gorillas are not eating, they rest. Sometimes one gorilla grooms another. It uses its fingers to pick dirt or sometimes ticks and lice out of the other gorilla's hair. After the rest, the gorillas walk to after they rest, the gorillas walk to a new spot and eat some more. When it gets dark, gorillas build nests on the ground or in bushes or trees. They press down leaves and grass to make a soft pillow. Every night, they build a new nest in a new spot. When gorillas grow up, they often leave their groups. A female gorilla may find a new group or a new male to live with. A male gorilla lives alone or with other young males for a few years. Then he joins a new family group or find some females to live with him. Some gorillas can live up to 40 years. It's a long time. There are not many places left where gorillas can live. They live in the forests of Africa where they have food to eat. 
but people chop down the trees, they sell the logs, they use the land for farms or dig mines for metal. People also hunt gorillas. Many gorillas are in danger if people do not help them. Soon, there may be none at all. Gorillas are afraid of people. When scientists go into the forest to study gorillas, they must be quiet and move slowly. Sometimes they even chew on leaves like a gorilla or make gorilla noises. When gorillas get used to people, scientists can watch them closely. They learn where gorillas live and what they eat. They watch as young gorillas grow up and have babies on their own. Scientists learn what gorillas need and how we can help them survive. We can protect forests where gorillas live. We can make parks where gorillas are safe. We can help people find food so they will not need to make forest land into farms or hunt gorillas to eat. Gorillas are primates just like us and they need our help to survive. The end. All right, so my next book is called Pinkalicious and Planet Pink. We've read several Pinkalicious books in the past few weeks, so let's figure out what she's up to this week. Here we go, and this book is by Victoria Kahn. In science class, we learned about the planets. They are the most amazing things in the world. I mean, in the universe. Every planet has its own color, said Miss Penny. Earth is blue and green. Mars is a deep shade of red. Venus is bright and milky white. Miss Penny showed us something I'll never forget. There's even a pink planet, she said. Scientists just discovered it. They don't know how, they don't know much about it yet. For homework, we had to imagine what the pink planet is like. I had lots of ideas. I know a thing or two about pink places after all. I made a list. Then I took out my pink paint to make a picture of planet pink. There's no such thing as a pinky, pink Tony and Peter said later when I showed him my work. How do you know, I said. Have you ever seen one? Peter thought it over. No, he replied. I don't think so. Then he got very excited at the thought of meeting an alien. Maybe pink Tonians will come to Earth, cried Peter. They'll fly down in their spaceship when they land. They'll say... Take me to Peter. No way, I said. If Pinktonians come to visit, they'll want to meet me first. I'm the most pink pinkerific, pink-loving person on the planet. Maybe they'll like you so much, said Peter. They'll want to take you back home with them. Ha ha ha, I said. I knew Peter was just teasing. That night, I had a weird dream. A beam of light shone in my window. I followed the bright pink footsteps. There, in my yard, was a huge pink spaceship next to a tiny pink alien. Greetings, said the alien. I am a Pinktonian. You may call me Pinky. Hello, I said shyly. We have come to take you to Planet Pink, said Pinky. We hear you make great cupcakes. They are our favorite food. Pinky seemed nice, and the offer was exciting, but I didn't want to leave home. The more I thought about it, the more upset I got. Please don't make me go, I said. No, I want to stay here. Just then I woke up. I was safe and sound. Except something was odd. There was a beam of light coming through my window, and all over the floor were bright pink footprints. I ran to Peter. Wake up, I cried. There's a Pinktonian in my room. I told him my dream. I showed him the clues. Peter grabbed his flashlight. I grabbed my wand. We tiptoed around the room, looking for the alien. Suddenly, we heard a scratch. Then we heard a screech. Then we saw something moving under the bed. It's the alien, we shouted. Mommy and Daddy turned on the lights. What's going on in here? They asked. There's an alien from Planet Pink under my bed, I cried. 
Mommy started laughing. There was a creature down there, but instead of a pink alien, it was a fuzzy white kitten. It's the neighbor's new cat, said Mommy. She must have climbed in the window and stepped in your pink paint. I'll wipe off her paws. We'll take her home tomorrow. Good night, space explorer, said Daddy. I got under my covers. The kitty snuggled up beside me. I hadn't met a Pinktonian, but I'd made a new friend. As I drifted off to sleep, I saw the kitten's collar. Her name was Luna, which is another word for moon. How pink a perfect. The end. Okay, so let's read our final book. And this book is called Zoo Day by Anne Rockwell. Here we go. On a sunny Saturday, I got to the zoo with my mother, father, and sister Lucy. It's my very first time there. Lucy's too. My father buys a ticket for each of us and a bag of popcorn to share. While we look at the map, I can hear roars and howls, chitter chatter and songs, cries and squawks. I hold my father's hand tightly because the roars make me a little nervous. First, we go into the jungle house to say hello to the monkeys. Next, we visit the gorilla forest. The big gorilla comes right up to the window. She stares at me so hard. I feel like I'm in the zoo and she's the visitor. At the African plain, we find a mother elephant and her baby. The baby elephant sticks very close to its mother. There are funny looking ostriches, zebras, and giraffes munching leaves off the trees. Inside the grasslands building, I can see the big lion with the yellow mane. He looks sleepy and quiet, but all of a sudden he opens his mouth and roars. It must be his nap time, Lucy said. I bet he's telling us to shush and let him sleep. Then we visit the reptile house. We see a giant boa constrictor and a tiny coral snake. The coral snake is very pretty, but very poisonous. There is a turtle swimming in the tank. We walk along the shady path to where the polar bears live. Lucy loves polar bears. She has a big stuffed animal polar bear at home, and it's her favorite toy. We love to watch the polar bears in their underwater dance. We could watch them all day. But my father says, it's almost time, let's go. We hurry over to the big pond where the sea lions live. They're climbing on rocks and sliding off, and they're barking and splashing and grunting. Lucy laughs, they sound just like Roxy. Roxy is our pet beagle. I laugh too. When the zookeeper comes to feed them, the sea lion gathers around, barking even louder. She throws a shiny fish up in the air. A sea lion catches it and slaps his flipper on the rock. Another catches a fish and dives underwater. Now they're making me hungry, I tell my mom. Me too, she says. We sit at a picnic table and unpack our lunch. Just as soon as we finish, I hear a whistling sound. What's that? I wonder. We follow the sound to the birdhouse, but the birds aren't in cages. They are flying all over and all around us, but they don't fly out the door. Lucy and I hold up small cups of nectar. A pair stands on my shoulder and takes a sip. I wish I could bring them home, but we can't bring home any of the animals we've seen. Just the same, Dad buys us two balloons, one with a polar bear for Lucy and one with a parrot for me to remember our day at the zoo. The end. Thank you for sharing this special time with me. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye bye.